walking for weight loss, probably one of the best ways to lose weight, probably the most superior way to lose weight, and the least expected ways to lose weight. Because people think you need to be doing HIIT cardio, you need to be going hard. No. Slow is steady when it comes to weight loss. Slow movement is steady. The scale may not necessarily be slow if you're combining it with OMAD, but you get what I mean. Speaking of OMAD, that's how I made this lovely transformation on my weight loss journey. I lost the majority of my weight eating a one meal a day fasting schedule, which all it means is fasting for 20 hours a day and eating all of my calories within a 20 hour eating window. Why do I do this? Because of the metabolic effects that you get when you fast. When you fast, you lower your blood sugar. When you fast, you are in fat burning mode because of that lower blood sugar. When you fast, you produce ketones at around 17 hours of fasting. And those ketones go up into the hypothalamus of the brain and shut down hunger hormones. And fasting helps to suppress my appetite and has helped me a lot in controlling my struggles with binge eating. I used OMAD as a tool to help me stop binge eating, and it's been completely successful on my weight loss journey, so much so I'm reintroducing it right now. So there's different variations of OMAD. There's the warrior diet version, which I love, my favorite, one of my favorite versions. Actually, today I did 22 hours of fasting. <laughs> I think that one's my favorite one. But you can fast for 20 hours a day, eat in the four-hour eating window. You can fast for 22 hours a day and eat in the two-hour eating window. It's up to you. Or you can do one plate a day or real OMAD, which is fasting for 23, 24 hours and eating within a one-hour eating window or half an hour eating window or just do one plate a day. Same thing. Very similar. Anyway, let's get back into walking, walking and weight loss. And I want to share with you how you can increase your caloric burn with walking. So right now I have a step challenge going on. I want to know in the comments below, what is your step goal? My step goal is 14,000 steps a day. It has been daunting. It has been hard, but I'm doing the best I can. And I want you to do the best you can as well. It's all about putting in that effort and not giving up when failure happens. You're going to face adversity. The reason why people fail on their weight loss journey is because when they, as soon as they face adversity, they quit instead of having the mindset of being like, okay, what am I doing right now that's preventing me from getting results? What can I do better that's going to get me results? Don't freak out. Don't attach to the outcome because you are not that outcome. You are a resilient butterfly, okay? You evolve when situations get tough. Have that mindset. Wear your armor and get stronger. That's how we got to do it. We cannot be a victim to our circumstances. We have to refuse to be a victim to our circumstances. Anyway, let's get into my tips on how to increase your caloric burn with walking. Number one, you can walk uphill. Walk up hills. Get in your steps. Let's say your step goal is 10,000 steps a day. You can still Get in those steps, maybe perhaps making it more challenging for yourself by going uphill because when you walk at an incline, you'll burn more calories than walking flat on the ground. So this is a way to increase your calorie burn without increasing the number of steps you need to take. So there is that. Number two, walk faster. If you walk faster, again, you increase your caloric burn. So it's better to try to speed up your walking. Perhaps if you're wearing a watch of some sort, see how fast you're walking. Usually watches tell you how fast you're walking per hour, where it'd be like three miles per hour or like two miles per hour or what have you. Be cognizant of how fast you're going and maybe outdo yourself each time just so you can get the steps done faster and it will make you burn more calories faster. Number three, breathe through your nose. While you're going on a walk, make sure you're breathing through your nose. You're taking deep breaths. Here's a good rule. I did this today. Breathe in for every four steps and then breathe out for every four steps. You can do a kind of a box breathing evenly. Or if you're feeling a little stressed, out, you can perhaps breathe in for four seconds and then breathe out for eight. That's going to calm down your parasympathetic nervous system and make you all calm and happy. And when you're calm and happy, you're bringing down those cortisol levels. And when you bring down those cortisol levels, you're going to lose weight because cortisol 
can really hinder weight loss. And I know that all too well. <laughs> I know that all too well. So just understand that a calm mind is a successful mind and a successful mind is a winning mind. So let's get in those deep breaths. And not only that, when you breathe through your nose, you also increase your basal metabolic rate because you're getting in more oxygen. It's a better and efficient way to get in the oxygen to the muscles that you're utilizing. And it's going to help brace your core when you're taking deep breaths, which is important for my next point. Number four, improve your walking form. Move your arms more. Embrace your core. Now, a lot of people think embracing their core is sucking it in. No, embracing your core is actually pushing out, breathing into your back, Breathing into your whole transverse abdominus. So that's like the muscles that are around your whole stomach, just that circle, just breathing out. Like think of you breathing out like a balloon and you're breathing in all directions, 360 degrees. That is how you brace your core. So when you're walking, you can do that with a deep breath. You take a deep breath and just think of breathing down into your pelvic floor. For us women, men have a pelvic floor too, but I don't know how it feels on a man because I'm not a man. I don't have men parts, but for women, you know, breathe down into the pelvic floor, feel it expand like a butterfly or like a flower, or like a rose. Why did I say that? Because I did a pelvic floor meditation this morning because my pelvic floor has been destroyed thanks to being a mother. <laughs> so it's just loosens in it out, deep breath, loosens in it out. When you loosen up the pelvic floor, you are engaging your core. So there's that. Number five, on weekends, if you're busy with a nine to five or whatever your job schedule is, on weekends or whenever your day, you have a day off or you're feeling it extra a day after work, maybe do a longer walk. So instead of chopping your walk up into half an hour um, pieces, perhaps maybe do one long, consistent our walk. Why? That will help burn your calories doing it that way. Obviously, not all of us have the time to be walking an hour or two at a time in a row, but challenge yourself on a weekend and just extend that walk longer. That's going to help you burn more calories. Now, tips on how to get in these 14,000 steps a day if you're trying to do this with me on this challenge. Tips, tips, tips. Number one, break apart your steps break it apart. Make sure you're getting in the majority of your steps in the morning. In my head, I like to be like, I want to hit 10,000 K steps by like four or five o'clock PM. So then that just leaves me with 4,000 steps left to end the night off. So the way I've been getting these 14,000 steps a day, it's been tough. I haven't hit it every day. There are some days where I'm like, 1300. There are other days where I'm at 12 or 13,000. There's other days I'm at 12. But one thing I'm always doing is that I'm going above 10,000 steps a day. That's for sure. Because I'm currently in a competition with my personal trainer and all her clients. So I'm making sure I'm getting in those 10,000 steps. But not every day I'm going to hit the 14. I hit the 14 yesterday. Some days I hit 14. Some days I hit 15. So the way I do it is that I walk in the morning. When I'm working out, I'm cognizant of my steps. So I will make sure I'm on the treadmill for a good hour. And then I would also go on a walk at the end of the night. So I would make sure I would kind of spread it out that way. It is a challenge. That's the point of this. It is a challenge. Whatever your step goal number will, is, it's going to be a challenge because it is that challenge that will get you the result. It is pushing yourself past that limit that will get you the results in the kitchen or get you the results in walking. Just remember that. Now I've had people say, oh, if I walk too much, it stresses me out. Well, maybe that's because you're, or not stresses you out, but it causes you to retain your weight. That's because your cortisol levels are high. Maybe your step goal is too daunting because if you're choosing a goal that's too much and your body can't recover from it, you're not going to lose the weight because you're not recovered. You need to be recovered in order to lose the weight. And if you're walking and if you're in tons of pain, again, that will prevent you from losing the weight because you're stressed out every time you walk. So things you can do alternatively, if you have access to a pool, go swimming or do something that is light at home, do a step workout at home or what have you, or lower your goal down. You have to have discernment in this journey. Anyway, I hope this video was useful for you. If you made it this far in the video, just type in the words, we got this because we got this. Never give up. Send you guys my love. Take care. Bye.